So in today's video, I'm going to be going over member stack and showing you how I use it on the Unicorn Factory. So let's dive into it. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Connor. I'm the founder of the Unicorn Factory, a freelancer marketplace in Canada and in New Zealand. And I built the entire thing using no-code tools like Webflow, Airtable and Zapier. And so on this channel, I make tutorials, breakdowns, all sorts of types of TED Talks on how you can build your own directory or marketplace without needing to know how to code. And in today's video, I am going to be breaking down one of the key tools that I use to run the Unicorn Factory, which is MemberStack. So MemberStack is an incredibly important tool because without MemberStack, I wouldn't be able to charge my users a subscription fee, I wouldn't be able to have user accounts and a whole bunch of other things that I'm gonna be discussing in just a second. But before we get into it, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. It. it really keeps my morale high and it encourages me to make more of these videos. But without further ado, let's just get into it. So let's start off by going over what exactly MemberStack is. So MemberStack is a tool that you can use on your Webflow websites to hide content based on different user permissions. In short, if you have pages in your Webflow project that you want to hide from certain types of users, for example, if you want to hide content if a user doesn't pay you to use it, then you can use MemberStack to integrate it into your existing Webflow project. So at the time that MemberStack launched, there was actually no way for you to hide certain types of pages from different user types in inside of Webflow. It was in fact one of the most requested features and it actually still is to today on the Webflow website. So I use MemberStack a lot. For example, this page that we're looking at here is the freelancer dashboard and you can only see it if you have the permissions of a freelancer that I can create inside of MemberStack. And then inside of that as well, I have even more permissions, which means if you are a paying freelancer, you get access to these jobs on the job board. Plus you get extra access to things like the analytics dashboard inside of the freelancer page. So some more simpler use cases of where MemberStack can come in handy is for example, on a blog. So if you run a blog and you wanna create a section with paid content, then you can use a tool like MemberStack to just integrate it into your site and hide content based on if your user is paying you or not paying you. Another very common use case is in the online education space. So a lot of people who do one-on-one -on -one coaching or consulting or some form of online course can use a tool like MemberStack to basically run their student center or resource center and basically hide that content from users who visit the site and who are not signed up. So now I wanna go over a few things that you can do with MemberStack. I wanna show you how you can implement all of it. So no matter what you're working on, you'll be able to pick up a few things here. So let's dive into it. So the first thing I should probably show you is just how to set MemberStack up on your site. So all you need to do is install the header code and you can do that by clicking on the settings panel clicking on install code and then copying this code and just pasting it into the header of your Webflow project in the project settings part of the site. Now, once you've done that, a good next step is to start creating memberships. So setting up memberships is pretty straightforward. You can create plans, for example, a free plan, and then you can hide content based on what you have on your site. So say, for example, we have a sign up page that you only want to make accessible to users who have created an account then what you want to do is you just want to give that page a name and then hide that particular page or folder so once you've got that all set up then you can also add some paid plans for example a premium plan and then you can pick whatever you want to charge and you can even select the billing interval so you can do monthly yearly weekly a one-off fee but you can also do custom intervals for example every quarter so they give you a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can do with it you can also do things like add a free trial or add a setup fee or a whole bunch of other things that are really useful and really apply to a whole bunch of different use cases and then again here all you need to do is just hide content based off that user type so all you need to do is click on the hide content section and then we will create, for example, a folder inside of Webflow that we'll call the premium section. And then all you need to do is hide that page or that folder. And it should look something like this. And once you've created the membership, say for example, you wanna now allow your users to sign up and you want the default plan that they go to to be the free plan, then all you need to do is click on the sign up link button here and copy this over. So then when you have applied that link and a user clicks on the sign up button, 
a modal will pop up and the users will be able to sign up. And then from there, all you need to do is inside of member stack, determine where you want to send those users after they have completed the sign up button. And then you can really create this user experience where it feels like you have user accounts on your Webflow site. So now I just want to show you a few little extra tricks and fun things that you can do with member stack that really allow you to build a really cool experience for your users after they've signed up. The first thing that I'm going to show you is embedding custom content onto your pages. So one thing that you can do is quite cool is when someone signs up, then you can add the variable of the user's first name to your sign up page and then you can basically display their name and make it a more personalized welcoming experience. So the way that you can do that is inside of Webflow, all you need to do is just add a field, which I have highlighted purple here, and then I just write a text in there like, and welcome. Then if you wanna display the name, all you need to do is click on the element and then inside of the settings part of that particular element, all you need to do is drop in the text data ms member value first minus name. So you can get that information from inside of member stack. So when you add additional field types inside of member stack that you want to collect at sign up, you'll be able to see here that there's a green lightning bolt on the side and when you click on it, it will give you all the attributes that you then need to apply to certain elements like I did with that particular purple section inside of the welcome page. So you can really take this kind of methodology and really take it to the next level. So this is what the analytics dashboard looks like from inside of Webflow and all of these variables here are dynamically populated with values that I have inside of member stack. So then when we look inside of the published version of the website, we can see all these numbers that are dynamically populated. And here is where all these values sit inside of member stack. You can see I've created individual fields inside of each user's profile. And then I use the freelancer ranking system flow to basically populate these values each night. And that brings us to the next thing that you can do with member stack. And that is to use Zapier or Integromat to automate certain workflows to populate those field types inside of member stack. So I use member stack for a few different workflows like the freelancer sign up flow, which I've made a tutorial about on this channel. I also have a workflow inside of Integromat that removes the user if they decide that they no longer want to be on the site. But the main workflow that I use for member stack is the freelancer sync inside of Parabola where I then basically update all the information that then gets displayed inside of the analytics dashboard. So if you want to get something like that set up, then all you need to do is just go to the integrations tab inside of member the stack and then go ahead and find your API keys that you can then integrate into all those different tools. So when comparing Integromat and Zapier for member stack, I'll probably say that Integromat actually has slightly more actions than Zapier does. So if you are an Integromat user, congratulations, you have an app that has more actions and triggers than Zapier does. So one other little thing that you can do inside of member stack that's quite cool is create member only pages inside of the Webflow CMS. So personally, I haven't used this feature yet, but I know a lot of people that have. And basically the way that it works is that whenever a user signs up, you can then automatically create a CMS page that only they have access to. So what's cool about that is you can build way data richer profile pages or dashboards for your users because you can link different parts of the CMS to that particular page. I have thought about integrating that, but to be completely honest, I don't really need it. It wouldn't really move the needle that much. And it also starts to mess with my CMS limits. So I've stayed away from it, but there are definitely heaps of use cases where a feature like that becomes super handy. And the last thing that I'd say on this matter also is that it directly integrates with Stripe, which means whenever payments are processed through member stack, it automatically ends up in your Stripe account, which makes getting paid out an absolute breeze. But that is pretty much it. Um, I kept this very high level because I wanted this to be as accessible as possible. As soon as you start playing around with it, you'll start to see that there are actually a lot of really cool things that you can do with member stack. But I hope this was enough to help you get up and running. Let me know in the comments down below what it is that you're working on, what things you're struggling with, or if there any types of use cases with member stack that you'd like me to talk about in a future video. Other than that, thank you so much for sticking around for the entire video and I'll see you back for the next one.